five, four, three, two, one. Lift off, Starlink four seven. Eagle is pitching down the range. M one D chamber pressures are nominal. We are T plus 40 seconds into liftoff. Falcon 9 has successfully cleared pad 39A and carrying Power our stack of album. 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Moments ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic stresses during ascent. Q. And there was Max Q. We are getting some great views of this daytime liftoff. In about a minute, we have three events happening in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff, also known as Miko, followed by stage separation, and then second engine start one, also known as SES-1. During main engine cutoff, uh, this is where all nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut down in order to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation. And back engine chill started. During stage separation, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean for its landing attempt. And the second stage will continue with the third event, which is second engine start one. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to propel the second stage along with the 49 Starlink satellites into orbit. Those three events should be happening uh, here in about 20 seconds. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Bearing separation confirmed. So we've had successful main engine cutoff, successful stage separation, successful second engine start on the um, second stage, and then also fairing deploy. On screen right now, you can see the first stage booster at the bottom of your screen um, making its way back along with the two fairing halves. They've deployed, They're, they were at the top of the screen, but they'll make their way back towards Earth and be recovered by our recovery vessel. Doug. As a reminder, those fairing halves, uh, one flown, one was flying for the fourth time, and the other was flying for its sixth time. So a couple of views on screen right now. On the right-hand side of your screen is a view of our single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Those Starlink satellites that we have been talking about, all webcast, those are located on the opposite end of that engine. On the left-hand side of your screen is a view from the top of our first stage looking down. Um, its job right now is to head back towards uh, the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, and make its sixth landing attempt. In order to make its way back, the first stage has two burns today. Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. The first is the entry burn, where three of their Merlin engines will reignite. And this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that will bring the, speed, the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. The first burn is expected to start around the T plus six minute and 47 second mark. And the second burn is going to be starting at the T plus eight minute and 26 second. So we are still a few minutes away from the next milestone. 
the Starlink satellites that we're going to be delivering today, we're going to be delivering them to low Earth orbit, and they will be operating at about 550 kilometers. Uh, most satellites are at 36,000 kilometers in altitude in geostationary orbit. And when satellites are farther from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and satellite, known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities such as video calls and online gaming. Starlink satellites operate at, at over 60 times closer to the Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in much lower latency. It's continuing to go well for both stages. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see some action. Uh, those puffs of gas, that is nitrogen from our attitude control system. That in conjunction with the grid fins that you see on, on screen, uh, those help to steer and orient the first stage as it makes its way back to its targeted landing zone. So we are about 20 seconds away from the first of two burns on the first stage. Three engines on the Merlin, three Merlin engines on the first stage will reignite and help to slow down that stage before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. And there are those three engines that have reignited. This burn is expected to last for about 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. Awesome, that is one of two burns successfully completed. Stage two, FTS is saved. In about a minute, we have a couple events happening in rapid succession. So we'll have the landing burn start on the first stage, and then as Both that is ending, and as our first stage is going to be uh, attempting its sixth landing on our drone ship, we are expecting second engine cutoff on the engine that you see on the right-hand side of your screen, followed by uh, the call-out for successful um, orbital insertion. And as a reminder, because we won't have ground station coverage during the time that the Starlink satellites separate uh, today, we will be ending our webcast stage after one, we confirm orbit of the second stage, and then we'll confirm deployment on our social media platforms. Just under 10 seconds away from the landing burn of the first stage. For now, we are enjoying some stage two great views guidance. of the second stage, stage rolling vacuum engine. So you can see that the drone ship is getting closer. And on the right-hand side of the screen is that drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one, late deploy. Does look like the video cut out for a little bit. And hearing some cheers here in Hawthorne. And there's visual confirmation that the first stage has landed for the sixth time. And this marks our 106th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. Uh, that includes both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. Good orbit insertion. Uh, so during that time, we also got a successful second engine cutoff of the second stage, and you just heard the call out for good orbital insertion. And as previously mentioned, although payload deploy is scheduled to occur around the T plus 15 minute mark, we won't have ground station coverage to confirm successful deployment until about T plus one hour and 20 minutes. 
For those of you that are interested, we'll keep the audio-only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel, and then we'll confirm successful payload deployment on our social channels. But that is going to be bringing our webcast to a close today. Thank you to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you to all of our viewers and all of our Starlink customers using our service at this time. Thanks for joining us for our third and final launch of this week, and we will see you again soon.